Mike Tyson is not the sort of person we generally interview on this show. He's not a political figure. He's not still boxing. Why did we talk to him? Well, because Mike Tyson has spent almost 40 years at the very pinnacle of American society. And then at the very bottom, he went to prison at one point. He's seen everything. And a lot of people who lead lives like that are destroyed by them. They become numb and insensible, particularly if they're boxers. But a rare few become wise and fascinating. <laughs> Tucker Carlson, introing his interview with Mike Tyson. Most boxers become just like angry and violent. They don't think and they don't talk. Never spoken to a boxer post career that actually has a brain. Weird how that works. Uh, let's let him uh, go ahead and start. They talked about his life and his career. Maybe Tucker was surprised. Let's watch. I'm really proud of my childhood. Yep. Yeah. But no advantages. Yeah, my disadvantage was my advantage. What do you mean? Um, my adversity yeah. inspired me to be more than what I truly was. I believe that. When I was, when the guys were talking to me, because they wanted, they, they said, well, you're not a bad guy because you did that. So we talked. He said, if we have an ex fighter, Bobby Stewart, you need to meet him. He'll probably get you in shape. And I said, well, I would love to meet him. I met Muhammad Ali. I seen Muhammad Ali once. And then this guy knocks on my door. I heard you want to talk to me. What do you want? I said, I, I want to be a fighter. He said, everybody wants to be a fighter. You show me you want to be a fighter. Let's just see how your conduct is. And I went from being a really jerky, nasty guy to becoming an ace Stewart. <laughs> There's lots of things to springboard off of to find out about Mike Tyson's life. There's, he's done many interviews, he's done podcasts. I think he had his own even and probably still does. He says a lot about his life, but there's many things you can ask to go certain avenues to discover how he's come where he is, things he had done in his past, which were absolutely horrible. You can dig into all that stuff. And it seemed like it was pretty normal if you go in that direction. But then they got to talking <laughs> about this. Let's watch. Feel about the guys you were in the ring with? Um, I wanted to kill them. <laughs> well, I can tell. <laughs> why Why did, uh, I'm laughing nervously. Oh. Um, what, you really felt that way? You wanted yeah. To. How did you get yourself into a frame of mind where you wanted to kill them? Just think about who I am. I don't want to go back there no more. I don't want to be... I don't want to be in that poverty um, state of mind anymore. Not from a physical perspective. I don't want to be poverty struck in here. Yeah. So would you sit and think about it before a fight? Think about the guy you were fighting? Absolutely. The more you hurt them, the higher you go in life. Adrian, it seems like Tucker wasn't expecting the levels of this interview. He was thinking, oh, this is funny. He wanted to kill him in the ring. There's a lot behind that. If someone wants to kill someone, if you, you know, if you can understand humans, you would think, well, why? Where'd that come from? What got you to that point? Killing in the ring? That's crazy, Mike. What is this going on? Instead of <laughs> I think that's funny. But then I think he began to read the room and goes, wait a second, this is an interview. This is someone I can talk to. But I'm not sure if you really went that direction further. Um, I, I'm not here to completely criticize his direction in this interview, but I always, whenever I'm, I'm left thinking there's something more that could be taken from this, I'm like, just ask that or just say that. That's what I'm watching it for. And I'm not sure if you ever got there. What are your thoughts? It definitely seems that you know when people hear Mike Tyson, they think of someone who was violent, who was very much almost a caricature in the 90s and in the late 80s and whatnot. And the individual is a man. This is a person who has been through a lot in their lives, who has caused a lot of pain yeah. for others, but has also suffered considerable pain. And so to think that he doesn't have depth and hasn't done some work would be to take away from him a humanistic element. And so I don't think Carlson was prepared for that humanistic element, that, that deeper quality of work having been done. And so I think you're absolutely right uh, and spot on that Carlson wasn't prepared or ready for this and nor did he truly wish to explore it. And that could be because he didn't want to recognize this humanistic element, but it also could be because Carlson is completely disingenuous and pathetic as an individual. <laughs> uh, whenever you don't consider certain folks humans, it shows once you talk to those folks. It's that's your perspective, that's what you see. Uh, you talked about how um, uh, Tyson's gone through a lot. Maybe uh, this is some explanation as to why he was uh, in the state that we assume he was in. Let's go to these graphics, you guys, because there was uh, revelations about uh, what was going on before this interview. Uh, apparently he said he had smoked Tyson head, not Tucker, a truckload of weed. 
details. We're told Carson Carlson invited uh, legend Mike Tyson to stay at his home before the champ appeared on his Fox Nation streaming show, Tucker Carlson's Day. But insiders say that Tyson thought he'd have to turn down the hospitable offer because he has a heavy weed habit and didn't want to impertinently hotbox Carlson's tastefully appointed mansion. But we're told the Fox host assured Tyson, who appeared on the show Wednesday, that he was quite welcome to stay and to blaze away to his heart's content. Uh, Tucker told him that it's not his thing personally, but he had no problem with Mike smoking while he was there, uh, said to this uh, particular source that was talking about it. So um, he wasn't sure if he could really do it because Carlson doesn't do it, but it's openly welcome in the house. So I mean, this is the other part of it. You can talk about that too. I mean, I'm so curious as the situations behind that and then what led to him smoking this much, which by the way, how much this last graphic you guys. Tyson, who was the undisputed world champion from 87 to 90, finished his career with 50 wins and six losses, recently said on his podcast that he and his buddy, co-host Eben Britton, smoke about $40,000 worth on his California cannabis farm each month. I'm not sure what, how much that is in pounds of weed, but 40K worth of it is a whole different thing, um, I guess. Good job, maybe this will lead to more in depth interviews. Your last thoughts on this, Adrian? Yeah, uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> some of the Truckloads. Interviews. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of pushing for normalization of cannabis, especially considering the health benefits and the fact that our society pushes alcoholism and it is incredibly toxic. So if Michael Tyson can be a conduit for that, so be it.